All right, today I'm going to redraw finally for the winner of the giveaway for cat. That's backwards, cat's eye. Let's get to it. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown video for you, but first I am going to go ahead and redraw finally for the book Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. I hosted a giveaway a number of weeks ago for this and unfortunately the winner never reached out and contacted me. So I'm going to go ahead and just redraw for this particular book and I have my wheel here. I'm not going to ask people to re-enter. I'm going to select from the people who originally asked to win this book so I have it all ready to go and I'm gonna spin and see who is going to win Carrie congratulations Carrie I'm so excited um, please email me at the email address listed in the description below and I will get this out to you as soon as possible it will there'll be a slight delay but I will get it out to you please email me and um, give me your contact information. I will definitely get this out. Yay, congratulations to Carrie for winning Cat's Eye. All right, the next thing is the 1001 Book Countdown. If you are new here, I am Sandy. Hi, welcome, welcome back if you're not new here. If you're not familiar with the 1001 Book Countdown, I will leave a card up here for you where you can go and check out the original video. But Basically, I'm reading books off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list and slowly making my way through that list. I am still having a lot of fun with this. It's a passion project of mine where I want to make it through all thousand and one books, which is really 1300 books because I combined all editions together, but I have been having so much fun doing this. So please consider giving me a subscribe and sticking around and seeing how far I get on this very, very large project. So for today, what we will go ahead and do is put up the numbers, which are 890, which is the number I have left off of the main list. And I will put up the number I have to look 49, which is my number left for 2023. Every year at the beginning of the year, I go and pre-select 52 books that I like to try and focus on with the goal every year of hitting zero. I have not hit zero and yet <laughs> since starting my channel. And so far this year, I have 49 books that are actually left for this year. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I have a lot of plans later in the year. I have some big books coming up. I read, I read a big book in January. I'm just kind of going with it. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay right now with where things stand. But for today, the book, the first book that I am going to talk about is actually The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. I read this as an ebook. Um, I was able to get this from my library, which is one of the things of my goals for this year was to try and utilize my library a little bit more. I do love the cover even on this ebook. This is a book I may actually consider buying at some point. I'm not sure yet. I think this is actually part of a trilogy, but I did not have to read the other ones to be able to understand or comprehend this particular book. So The Drowned World, what is The Drowned World about? I'm going to put this down. The book was originally published back in 1962, and J.G. Ballard has seven books on the 1001 Book Countdown, and this is the first book that I have read by J.G. Ballard. When I went and looked through the titles that were there, though, there is one that is very familiar, and it's actually Empire of the Sun. I'll put the book cover up here. I have seen that title but I haven't read it. So I wasn't sure what I was expect to expect when I went in here. I had a certain kind of, I guess, idea in mind with Empire of the Sun, and this book was nothing like that. So this book is actually a post-apocalyptic type of a novel, and it also has science fiction woven into it. I did not know J.G. Ballard wrote science fiction. I, Like I said, I had a preconceived notion of what these books would be like, just solely based off the title Emperor, Empire of the Sun. So this particular book opens up on a post-apocalyptic world that is superheated and is covered entirely in water, which is really where the drowned world's name starts to come from. And you start in, in be, are introduced to one of the main characters who's Dr. Kieran's key. K-E-R-A-N-S, and he is living at the Ritz in some unknown city. He doesn't really know where he's at, and he doesn't necessarily want to know where he's at. He's just in some desolate city that is covered in water. They have to dock at the sixth floor, so it is pretty covered. Not so covered that you can't obviously get, or that it's, that you can't get to the buildings, but it is definitely a flooded world. The average temperature at the poles, according to this book, is 85, and in the main part of 
of the world, it was closer to 185. People have had to abandon any kind of higher elevations because there's no cover from the elements at all at those higher elevations. So it pulled me in in the beginning of this book. I was enthralled by just learning or reading about this post-apocalyptic world covered in water and the challenges that you would have with that. And it was kind of interesting to some of the different characters and how they reacted, but clearly people are struggling to live in this world. And this particular character, I don't think he had ever seen the city without water in it. It was one that some people that he knew had seen it, he had not. So it was a really interesting perspective to this is what you've grown up in. Uh, about halfway through the book, it really became a lot more sci-fi-y like. There's a new character that's introduced that has some weird behavior and he has a weird physical appearance that's described. And yeah, there's there's another, he is, he is probably really one of the most interesting characters, but boy, is he creepy. And J.G. Ballard does a great job of making this character very, very, very creepy. <laughs> so I actually enjoyed it. I think I give it kind of a middle of the road uh, rating. I enjoyed the post-apocalyptic parts far more than the drowned world, or I mean the science fiction type of parts, but it was a surprise. I was pleasantly surprised. It also was only around 200 pages, so it was easy to fit in. This book was actually on my pile of possibilities for February. I ended up reading it in January, and so it was just kind of that weird thing that I was able to read it right at the end of the month, but couldn't quite get it in a countdown. But J.G. Ballard's The Drowned World is my book that I have finished. I have to look because I don't remember the numbers. 890 to 889. I'm not confident in that number. So in editing, I will fix that, but I think it's 890 to 889. And it was on my 2023 list. So that number gets to go from 49 to 48. Fantastic, super happy, amazing, so glad. Uh, so the next book that I'm going to talk about is actually going to be this one, A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery. I have not finished this and I found myself this week really trying to force myself to read it quickly in order to put it in this video and I just stopped. I said no, I'm enjoying this book so much and I'm enjoying the characters and I really want to take my time with it. So I just said, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do one book in the video for this week and then that's I'll have a really great update for next time. This book, oh, this book is hitting me in all the places because I, this has some really interesting characters that are going through a heck of a lot and I find myself wanting to talk about this book all of the time but I have I'm about halfway through this particular book I'm having to record this video a little bit early in the week so by the time this goes live I may have actually managed to finish it but right now I'm only about halfway through uh so yeah it will be in the next one for sure it's the thousand and one book club pick for February and it has been just phenomenal just phenomenal so far uh, yeah I'm I wish I could say more. I just kind of want to give the characters in this book a big, big old hug. Other than that, other than that, the next book that I know I will be picking up is Paragorio by Balzac. I'm doing that as a buddy read with Tiffany at Beautiful Minutia, and we're scheduled to start that tomorrow and take, you know, a, I think about a week or so, two weeks to, I'm not sure how long, but sometime in February. So those are the two books that I will have in flight. I do have all my BookTube prize books still to write, read, so I don't know how much thousand and one book countdown books I'm going to be able to finish in February I'm going to do my best but it's it's uh it's looking a little crammed so <laughs> are you familiar I'm so curious in the comments are you familiar with J.G. Ballard uh with any of their writing have you read this trilogy is it worth reading the other ones I don't think they're in my list of thousand and one books the actual and is it I think it is a trilogy I didn't go back and double check that uh have you read anything by Ballard have you read Empire of the Sun does that title seem familiar to anybody else other than me but with that that is the total of my update today it's not a long update Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to be okay with that, but I really do want to take my time with that book. So uh, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, thanks everyone. Bye.